thrips treatment time. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose. And in today's video, we're gonna treat a really, really bad thrips infestation. <laughs> Luckily, not in my house. My plants do have a little bit of spider mites. Let's call this blissful ignorance. Which I got my good bugs for from Entocare. But also in this box are the really good predatory mites, two different kinds for thrips, because my boyfriend's sister actually has a really bad thrips infestation. Hi, it's Rose from the future, just breaking in here to say that I also actually had pretty bad thrips infestation, both in my grow tent and in my living room. Throughout the video, I'll give you a little updates on how that was going. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you if I had success treating with predatory mites only and no other sprays or anything. So let's head over there, clean the plants, and then put up these beautiful bugs to do their work. We are here now in my sister-in-law's house. These are all her beautiful plants. Let me show you real quick. On this side of the house, there are some alocasias and they have a lot of strelitzias, some succulents. I will show you up close, close later. This big strelitzia also is covered in thrips. Baby strelitzia. This alocasia we actually cut back because it had so many thrips, but look, it's growing again. And then some more plants over here. Brother-in-law, sister-in-law. Really cute plant rack that her boyfriend made. And also on this side of the room, we have pests, unfortunately. This plant, you actually can see really well what thrips damage can look like. This leaf came out very small. Here you can see a damaged leaf. Yep, and <laughs> they cut back their huge monstera all the way because it also had thrips, but it's growing again, so that's adorable. And more plants in here as well. Look how cute. So we have quite a lot of work, but we hope it's going to be effective because they have beautiful plants and they deserve a happy life. We do have to say they are in the middle of a redecorating, not redecorating, but rebuilding basically the whole house. So this is the only room that is almost finished and the rest is still a work in progress. So you might see some building supplies and stuff. The best thing about this house is their two beautiful cats. And they are so sweet. This is Luca. They are more focused on building their house, obviously, right now, so the plants might look a little bit sad, <laughs> but they do love their plants a lot, so I don't blame them for ignoring them for a little bit. Let's look at the thrips, because they are easy to spot. Do you see the black bits? Those are the mature zebra thrips right there. Hello, mister. You're gonna die soon. <laughs> And I think there are a lot of um, babies on this one. Oh, ah, a lot of them. Hotfur. <laughs> so here you can see there are mature ones, but also different stages of the larva stadium. So I guess this will be first. We're going to move the plants outside to spray them down and remove most of the bugs first. Step one. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna do is spray all of them down to remove the big thrips infestations and then we're gonna spray it with liquid gold leaf control which is something that will kill hopefully any leftover bugs the zebrina alocasia has some but not as many as the strelitzias it seems they seem to like the strelitzias here so we are spraying. Trying to not put too many, much water in the pot to not drown the plant itself. This is the one that's bad. And the leaf is bent anyway, so we might cut that off. I thought it would be fun to show you how they respond to the treatment. I don't know what's happening. Let's see. Do you see them responding at all? Hmm. 
they're not moving anymore so that's a good sign unfortunately that didn't really show you anything but i still wanted to leave it in here when i first started with plants i actually used a really strong pesticide to film the same thing and that showed a lot more clearly that they were responding to the treatment you shouldn't use this on plants that don't actually have pests so we're on only going to spray them on the alocasias and the strelitzias just to be sure don't forget to do all sides of the leaves so also the undersides and the stems as well <laughs> yeah bubbles well my sister-in-law did all the work i got distracted by this adorable cat and beautiful human <laughs> All right, the first half of the room has been sprayed down. This needs to dry out. So we are gonna go inside and drink some tea. It's really, really cold <laughs> to warm up our hands. And then we're gonna move these back inside and move the other ones outside. Hey, Luca. Hey, Luca. As always, more cat footage at the end of the video, if you like. So this is our box with animals, with good bugs, I should say. I got this from Entocare. And they advised us to get these. So here we've got the Swirsky Ultimite bags, like I own, also have in my house. And then for this house, we also have the Breda Trip, which are against adult thrips. These are applied a little bit differently. They gave us these. But you'll see how that works later on in the video. Time to move the plants back inside. This is the other side of the room. Again, we're gonna spray with water first and then with the uh, treatment and hopefully they will stay gone. After having sprayed it on, you can see there's some kind of foaminess on the leaves. And this stuff is supposed to kill all bugs it comes in contact with. But as soon as it's dry, and it's, that means it's gone. So it doesn't last on the plant, which is what makes it good and natural for using outside because once it's gone, it doesn't kill the good bugs anymore either. And look at that new leaf, that is beautiful. So half the plants have moved back inside. As you can probably tell, the front of the room is one section of plants and then the back of the room as well. So we're gonna split the treatment up into those two sections. I read you have to be really careful with the bags because you don't wanna squish the bugs that are inside. So you're only holding it on the carton part of it. And then from the Preda trip, we have four little tubes. I actually have never used these before, but let's look. Five minutes later. Hello. Yeah, I go. Ooh, Mark, will you base to see? Yeah. Oh, the lopen meteen al. Wat zie je meteen al helemaal lopen? Kijk, kijk, kijk. Oh my God, they're so big. They're so big, and they're gonna eat all the good, bad thrips. Wait, come out, babies. There's one. Did you see it? There's the one. Hello. Freaky. Here, will you sign? Here's lekker eten. Lekker trepsies eten. Maar Bobby, you must film. It's echt fascinerend. Ze lopen helemaal over, bijna over mijn hand heen. Ja, hier. Nee, ze zijn heel leuk. Hier. Oké, geef. Oké, dank. Oh ja. Check out this. They are literally so fast and already coming out. This is amazing. Have you ever seen a preda? thrip before. The Latin name is Franklinothrips vespiformis. And there's some kind of buckwheat or something on the outside which they live in. And as you can see, they are very awake. Woohoo! This is amazing. Go eat. Go eat some bugs. Luckily, my sister-in-law had already put some of the envelopes in the plants because I totally didn't realize that they would start to move so fast. We were kind of unprepared with which plants we we're going to put the, the envelopes in and how many we we're going to do, how, how much to spread out. So whoops. So we hung up the little bags and it looks like it's very effective already. You can see a little bit. It looks like maybe eggs of the good bugs as well as mature ones. <laughs> and the cat is fascinated by what we're doing. He loves the little thingy. <laughs> the other thing we're putting up are the bags that you already know from my previous video. If you haven't seen that, check it out here. But these are more for the babies and these are more for the mature ones. So we're just gonna pop that in here, making sure, whoops, that it stays close to the plant. And I guess we have enough to put one in each plant for today. 
even the plants that might not have grips. I want to make sure that they are as best protected as possible so that they can focus on their house and not on stupid thrips. I am putting them actually on the soil, which is not recommended. You're supposed to hang them up, but because these are quite small plants and it is kind of plastic, so it doesn't start to rot, I'm just gonna do it like this because I know they don't water their plants very often anyway, so it's not gonna get super moist. Oh, there's one coming out right now, that's fun. Oh. Hello, buddy. Go eat. The Preda trip on his hunt on the big, big Strelitzia. He's got a long way to go. Look at that. Such a cool plant. Was this the one we gifted to you? Yes. Haha, -ha. cool. Let's hope he becomes more happy again. Hello, puss. For the other side, let's open. This is actually quite hard to open, especially with a broken nail. Hopefully I will speed this up so you don't have to wait and watch me struggle. Oh, already one on my hand. Did you see them? They are so fast. Oh, they come to you so many. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. See it lopen? <laughs> Let's go spread them on the plants. So this is my sister-in-law's hand spreading them and watching this back I realized that she put this stuff next to the little envelopes that were there for this stuff. <laughs> so I'm having a little laugh by myself that I didn't instruct her well enough to put it in the actual pockets that we put in the plants. Whoops. We don't have enough uh, bucket thingies to spread it throughout every plant so we're just gonna do it like this. Hopefully that works. But for the main plants that have a lot of thrips on them, we've got these little buckets. This is Momo. Oh. <laughs> these cats are the most adorable things ever. Oh. I wish my cats were later, later. friends like this, lying oh, together. Later. I made sure to wash my hands after using the, oh, after using the poison. So don't be worried. I guess he likes the taste of soap. I didn't mention it here, but this treatment is definitely not poisonous for pets or humans, which makes it perfect for me. If you like the cat footage, there will be more at the end of the video. Here you can see a Preda trip walking on this beautiful Calathea mosaica. So they're already quite active. I hope they're going to work well for them. About two to three weeks after filming this, I found zebra thrips on my marantas which were in that cabinet so i isolated all the marantas but i also found california thrips which i figured out because i sent a photo to endocare and they kindly helped me figure out what it was in this beautiful windowsill area which was really sad they seem to be the most on my monsteras which i don't know maybe they are the the tastiest plants or something and actually i should have realized because some of the monsteras had quite a lot of thrips damage. I had them in the grow tent and then I moved them into my living room. So I realized I should check my grow tent. And yes, the grow tent was also full of thrips all over. It was pretty bad. All my propagations looked really sad. You could see all the damage. And I clearly should have noticed this before because I actually have a video about identifying pests early which you can find here and which I didn't do myself. Because I was now experienced with using Preda trips, I knew to put all the little envelopes ready first and then open the little tube. I hung up the bags, I hung up the little envelopes and I've been treating consistently, replacing the bugs every four weeks for ever since end of March and it's now middle of June. I'm back at my sister-in-law's house. It's been two or three weeks and we're checking up on the thrips infestation, which I heard is still here, unfortunately. I don't know exactly what I was thinking that we could treat a full thrips infestation in just two weeks. So excuse my ignorance. Since then I've learned and I know that that is never the case. Of course, I have to say hello to the beautiful cats. In this plant corner is a little jungle cat. Hey. Anyway, let's check on the Monstera. Before on this side of the room, it was actually just a few bugs. I wonder if the Preda trips are still opening up. Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> Ooh. And the banana. So far, so good. The Birkin 
whoops <laughs> looks very sad have you seen that video where the guy's like this is my fiddle leaf fig it has two leaves and then the leaf falls off and he's like it has one oh there we go it has one leaf i'm killing this plant sorry marcia i broke off two leaves oh one thing that she did tell me is that this coffee plant got a lot of browning on the leaves actually it was black before so it may have been the spray that we put on there even though it's not very strong it may have been too intense for this specific plant so ian the owner of liquid gold leaf actually recommends starting with a small part of a plant to test it out and not like we did spraying the whole thing whoops cat is curious and wants some more love let's see the new leaves on this epipremnum it seems like the leaves at least look big and happy again i don't see anything except maybe i do here do you see that white thing yeah it's walking that's a baby thrips now it's gone so that's not a good sign that was a larva okay let's check the other side of the room they are currently doing some work up on the roof so you might hear some noises there we go good example and we saw that the most thrips were on the strelitzia so let's check them out first <laughs> marcia told me that she has seen quite a few even some preda thrips walking right past the bad guys so that's not perfect i see one there and one more here let's check on this baby because that was very tasty for them apparently so the leaves actually look quite good the new leaves that i've opened they're a little bit bigger these don't have as much damage yet maybe there's one more strelitzia baby on this side which Looks like it does have some pests. Do you see the thrips babies? There's one on the edge and then one in the corner there. This one has a bit more bugs still. What about the Zebrina? Here is a mother, a mother tripsy, mature one, which I'm gonna kill one moment. Unfortunately, it seems like this side of this room still has quite a few mature thrips so that's not ideal we'll have to treat this side maybe again the entocare people warned me that thrips especially if you have a big infestation is kind of hard to treat with predatory mites because they are so they're really hard to get rid of and i'm sure if you've had thrips you may know this already they just keep coming back and it's really really annoying. This is one of the hardest pests to get rid of. I hope you know that and I hope you know that you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing the best you can. Mature thrips can fly. So even though these two are on this side and all the other plants are on that side or even on that side of the room, the mature ones can probably fly over and reinfest everything. So I think I'm going to recommend that they isolate these two plants, the Zebrina and the small baby um, Strelitzia and I'll help them again with more predatory mites and keep the cycle going to keep the plants clean. So overall, it's not a good success story as much. It is for most of the plants here, I would say. It's lessened the thrips infestation a lot, but it's not gone completely. And that is part of having a lot of plants and having pests. Unfortunately, you don't always get rid of them completely. Even though it wasn't a huge success, I hope that this shows you the realness of dealing with plants. I'm not an expert. I don't do everything perfect. I don't have a 100% success rate with anything I do. And I want to keep things real with you. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm happy to say that in my living room, I'm actually thrips three. <laughs> thrips, thrips free. <laughs> I don't want to say that too loud because I do open windows here and thrips can always fly in. So you never really know. I haven't seen a mature thrip since the 5th of May. So I was confident enough to sell some of my Monstera propagations and I finally have a little bit more space, both mentally and physically in my house. Because it's gotten a little bit overwhelming having so many plants. So I'm definitely downsizing my collection a bit. Here's a new leaf on my Thai constellation, by the way, looking amazing. But I'm really, really happy with how it went with predatory mites, using them consistently for March, April, May, June, three months. <laughs> and also using the blue sticky plates to catch the leftover thrips. I'm really, really confident and happy in this result. I never sprayed my plants. All I did was the predatory mites. So in my living room, I've had great success. It seems to have also worked great for the Marantas after being patient and 
keeping going for all those months. They finally seem to be thrips free, even though they look a little bit sad because they were in an isolated box for three months. But yeah, this, what the hell is growing here? Oh, buckwheat! The buckwheat started to grow. Oops. <laughs> I guess when you don't pay attention too much and your little envelopes are getting wet on the high humidity that was in here, the buckwheats can sprout and become little plants. That is very funny. <laughs> That is, that is cool. Okay, anyway, so the isolation and predatory mites in here worked great as well. I started to open this box now to let it get used to less high humidity so that I can move them back into my collection. But unfortunately, I haven't had that much luck yet in my tent. So I have a lot of sticky plates in here and the predatory mites as well. This is not how you're supposed to use them. They're not supposed to touch the soil or you'll get growing buckwheat like I showed you before. By the way, how beautiful is Caspar growing in here? Caspar baby. What I've noticed is I haven't seen a mature thrip in here, thrips in here for about maybe a week or so. So it's been a little bit slower. Yeah, I'll check all the plants in a minute. But I did notice that the good bugs really like the high humidity in here. This leaf was covered in some of the predatory mites that were climbing up through there. So that's really cool. Unfortunately, I noticed that even though the preda trips cannot fly, they did get on the sticky plates. So I have killed both fungus gnats, but mostly also some preda trips, which is a shame. So I'm going to remove those soon, I think, because it's getting a little bit annoying with getting stuck on the plates all the time. Let me actually get this out so I can show you the plants better. Here you can see some of the damage that the thrips have done. The leaves don't look very good at all on my melanos right now. And also the varicosums, <laughs> the humidifier is awake. Let's see, they also really liked the varicosums, which are back here. Let me just get this one out as well. Oh shoot, it's stuck on a stick. These are really annoying to get rid of because they stick to everything. But there we go. So behind here are the Vickies and you can actually see the new leaves look really good. There's some predatory mites walking on them right now. A lot of them have also been dying off, I noticed, so it might need to water that desperately. Yes. After watering, I hope it's going to recover a little bit because that was a pretty sad plant. Here you can see some thrips damage on one of the older leaves. But for me, that's how it works. If this thing is filled with thrips, I'm treating, but I am not looking at it as much. I don't want to like go in there. It's not as fun as looking at other plants. So I've left, left this alone quite a bit and ignored it a little bit to let the bugs do their work. I think it's working. Even though there are some amazing plants growing really well in here, it kind of became less fun to check on them because I'm always confronted with the thrips situation. So I don't know if you guys relate to that. Let me know in the comments. But so far it looks good. I can't say this is fully cleared yet, but I am hopeful that it's working. So with the experience that I have now, a few months later, I can say that it definitely can work, but you need a lot more time than two weeks. You need to keep regularly updating, <laughs> regularly <laughs> updating your bugs so that they stay fresh and stay active and keep on top of your plants, maybe isolate them if you have the ability, like a tent is perfect isolation spot, I guess. So my opinion has definitely changed after this few months and coincidentally I waited making that video for quite a while because it just didn't feel right somehow and now it does because I can show you that I thought it was gonna work really quickly and now I know better but after two and a half months it has worked a lot so don't give up on your plants know that having a few pests is part of having a lot of plants. Like our queen of houseplants, Summer Rain, says it's not about getting rid of all the pests, it's about managing them. So I hope that you're able to do that and not freak out every time you see one bug. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And maybe consider joining my Patreon or my YouTube membership. My patrons are lovely. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. And thank you all as well for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And I can't wait to show you more of my plants, of the plants I see in the shops, and of all the pest stuff that I learn about. So thanks so much and see you again soon. Bye, friends. He's so cute. Okay, he's gone. Can you make it? Hi, Pas. Hi, Pas. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> hey, Momo. This is Momo. Hello. Such beautiful eyes. Look at Chris. He's so beautiful. This one is so cute. Look at him lying down next to me. Cuddly time. Cuddly time. He's sleeping against the sofa while I pet him. Do you think the plants need some water? <laughs> Come on. Hey. Little tiger. We're getting inspected by Mr. Thrip's attacker. Does it smell nice? Look at his shiny coat. He is a very happy, healthy 